Hi, this is Quat, and in this video, I want to tell you about the global cell membrane action potential. So, if you have one cell and uh, you have a bunch of ions floating around, here's Na, sodium, K, potassium, and you got many more. Um, you have the same ones inside of the cell as well. Now, there is going to be magic protein, sodium, potassium, ATPase. That's going to set up the concentration difference for these ions, always, always working. So it's trying to set it up so that the outside, you have 5 millimolar of K, and inside, it's 10 times more, 50 millimolar. And uh, for Na, outside, you got about 100 millimolar, inside is 10 millimolar. Again, uh, 10x difference between the in and out for these ions. So now, when you just think about permeability for one ion, we're going to talk about K. K wants to go out because of this 10x concentration difference. This 10x concentration difference generates a energy, concentration-based, and you can compute this energy by RT, LN, concentration of K inside, and concentration of K outside. And this gives you the driving force with that concentration difference, which is about 10 for K. Now, as K move out, the place is going to be more positive outside because you got more Ks outside chilling, and inside, less K will be left over, so you have more negativity buildup. So this little charge difference across this membrane is going to also derive an energy, an electric energy, and you can compute that with the Z, F, E of the membrane for this K region. I'm just going to name this region the K region. So what this is saying is that charge moving through this membrane with this potential can give you this much energy. And eventually, the energy here that gets built up by this membrane potential is going to balance the energy generated by 10x difference of the concentration here. So EM, this is the magic uh, term because this is dynamically changing as charge builds in and out. This thing is changing. This is changing, changing, changing. How about this one, this little ratio? It's not changing. Why? Because the AT pace is working very hard to make sure this is 10x. If it's 11x, ATP slows down. If it's 9x, ATP goes fast again. So ATP this is just making sure 10x is constant. Given that this is constant, the force that's going to drive these uh, Ks out is pretty much constant. And as the constant buildup happens, this term changes. And as this gets more and more and more, more strong, repelling gets strong, eventually the energy generated by this repellent is going to balance the energy generated by the concentration gradient and the movement of this K will stop. And when you equate this, you can equate these two terms and you can solve for this magic changing uh, term, okay? Because we care about this term that changes a lot, which is going to be equal RT divided by ZF and LN, something inside, X is K in this example, something outside. So what this is saying is that X, in this case is K, give me a concentration difference of this thing, K, and uh, what's the charge of this thing? It's plus one. R is the constant, F is a constant, T, we use body temperature, LN is log base E, and basically you just plug in the concentration difference and then the charge, everything else is constant, then you can solve at that time what the membrane potential is. In the beginning, it's going to be low, but as K move out, membrane potential is going to get stronger and stronger, eventually big enough that size of this force is going to equal this size of uh, driving out a concentration force. Okay, we just talk about one atom here, which is K. But what happens when you have now more than one atom, like here's another opening, here Na is moving around, here's another one, maybe calcium, etc., etc. So cell has many ions move in and out. And wouldn't it be nice to know this one number, not just for this region, but for the entire cell membrane. That would be nice because now you can predict 
what cell wants, what is the cell's potential to change its uh, charge in and out. Actually, we can do that, and it's very simple. Here, same thing. Membrane potential, but instead of K, we're going to use the global. This is for the entire cell. Equals, it's basically sum of all of the membrane potential of ion I. So first ion to, let's say you have three ion, calcium, sodium, and potassium. Then N equals three. So you add up the first one, second one, third one. Go start from the first and at the third one. Add up all of their membrane potential. If the membrane potential of potassium is negative 60 and the membrane potential of sodium is 60 and membrane potential of calcium is 120, then you just add them all up, cancel each other 120, results 120. But not quite there yet because now you have to weight them because maybe K moves in and out better than NA. Maybe calcium doesn't move in and out. So we have to see who is more important in contributing to this global uh, membrane potential of the cell. And you can easily do that by multiplying each of this term with the permeability of that ion. This makes sense because K will have some real estate, Na will have some real estate, calcium will have some real estate. But if you have more real estate, then that real estate will be more like your membrane potential, right? Then you should contribute more to this total uh, global membrane potential of the cell. And if you have a very high permeability, you are weighted more. If you have a low permeability, then you are weighted less. Basically, you weight the membrane potential of that ion with the permeability of that ion. So finally, let's draw intuition graph. This is millivolt, here's 120, here's 60, and here's negative 60. So negative 60 is the membrane potential of potassium, positive 60 is that of the uh, sodium, and 120 is that of the calcium. Okay, so these three, are constant, they're set. Their concentration difference is set by some kind of AT pace making that happen. And the, the number of opening is constant because membrane doesn't change, suppose. Then eventually, this is going to be the membrane potential of those three ions. Now, suppose this cell is only permeable to potassium, K. Then the permeability of this and this will be zero, so the membrane potential of the entire cell is just potassium. If the cell is only permeable to sodium, then this is going to be the cell's entire membrane potential. If the cell is permeable to only calcium, then it's going to be positive 120 millivolt entire cell membrane potential. But in reality, the membrane potential is contributed by all of these ions. And sometimes cell membrane changes and increases permeability for ion A, ion B, it's dynamic. So the actual cell's membrane potential sometimes is here, but as you remove the openings for the potassium or potassium channel is broken or something like that, then uh -oh, other is going to win. But as potassium channel gets back up again, potassium is going to contribute more. And if Na increases, then Na is going to contribute more. So basically the entire cell's membrane potential is changing depending on the permeability of the ions. So finally, if you want to compute the membrane potential of the cell, what you do is you just add up the membrane potential of that ion with permeability of that ion multiplied. And you do that for the first ion all the way to, let's say, 100 different ions. Then this is going to give you one number. If this number is going to be positive, then inside of that cell wants to be more positive. But if this number is negative, then the inside of the cell wants to be negative. So a cell changes its membrane potential by changing, usually, the permeability of that ion. Maybe increase the number of holes for that ion, or make the existing openings more efficient, less efficient, faster or slower. So by changing the permeability, you change the membrane potential of the entire cell. This the membrane potential for that ion is usually pretty constant because something like AT pace is driving this kind of a concentration difference which results in setting up of that uh, membrane potential for that specific ion. So this term is pretty constant, but permeability can change. In fact, cell uses the changing permeability to drive change in the cell property. When your nerves fire, muscles contract, etc., what's happening is that there will be a temporary surge of sodium coming in or other stuff happening, and then the cell is going to change its charge quickly. 
And when the charge changes within the cell, some other openings that depends on the charge change will either open or close. So some kind of a charge change happen and this leads to opening or closing of some kind of a channel. And why would this matter? Well, opening and close of a channel changes the permeability of what this channel let go. So this kickstarts change of permeability of the ion and that's going to propagate and can lead to the action potential.